Hello, my name is Marcus, and this is Motion Graphics and Cheese. This time around, we're going to be looking at how to create this graphic depth of field effect. You see how the magenta, or the red, and the green is separating from the images in the background. Maybe even figure out if kangaroos like kite surfing. So uh, let's take a look at it. We're going to be using an effect called Chromatic Aberration 2. As you can see here, there's a link to this effect in the description. It's completely free, as you can see here, from plug-in everything. So here in the composition, you can see that the Chromatic Aberration is separating and the further back the characters go. Not only that, but they're being tinted by the same color of the background. All right, so let's start by creating a control layer. So, new. Null object. We're going to call this control. Now we're going to add some effects to this bad boy here. So first of all, we're going to add a slider. A good old-fashioned slider control. And we're going to call this tint distance. Oops. That I apparently cannot spell. Duplicate this, and then I'm going to call this doff distance, as in depth of field, which is the, the effect of things blurring the further away they go from the camera. And then we're gonna duplicate this again, whoops, duplicate this again and call it amount. There we go. And now we're gonna need a color control over here in the effects panel. And we're gonna call this tint color. Now we're going to need one more slider here, so we're going to duplicate, move it down, and call it Point of Interest. You know, because everything isn't interesting, unfortunately. So now we have Miles completely clean here, right? So let's go over here, let's apply a quick Chromatic Aberration 2 effect here. Already now you can see it's taking all the blacks away because the unmalt is built in, but if we untick it, all of a sudden it just becomes a big square, and we don't want that, right? But at least we can see how the chromatic aberration works. So we can already now maybe change it to red and green so that it matches the, matches the movie. You can even change the direction in which they are projected, the position offset, all that good stuff. As you can see, right now they're being cut off. We, of course, don't want that. And it's being based on the contrast of the image. We don't want that either. So let's start by saying fill. Let's use a fill effect. Let's set this to, let's say, 60. So that it doesn't, it's not completely bright. So already now it's getting better. But it's still being cut off. So what do we do there? We, let's apply another effect called grow bounds. So this is going to extend the bounding box of this image, so that the effect extends beyond its initial reach, right? So, now we have these basic ones here, and maybe you're completely satisfied with the way the colors are, that's fine. We can apply a hue and saturation, that's what I did, I maybe like minus 22, so it's not so saturated, and maybe even minus 30. So the next step in this is that now we only have the chromatic aberration. We, of course, also want the actual image in here. So let's apply a CC composite. And let's untick RGB only because we also wanted to inherit the original alpha. So now we can see it's starting to come together. So as a last effect, let's apply a tint, all right? So this is going to take the atmospheric fog, basically. It's going to determine how much the image is tinted based on how far away it is from the camera. So let's go up to control layer here, and let's unfold all of these effects, all right? Let's move this up a smidge so we can see what the heck we're doing. Let's expand the miles effects here. Here we go, tint. And now we can pick whip these tint colors up to the tint color of our control layer. Because that way, 
we're going to be able to control the tint color of all the layers at once, which is just plain cool. And let's take the tint color from our control layer and click on the brightest part of the sky so that we get that delicious tint color on Miles. All right, so now we have this initial setup. So let's deactivate all the effects beyond the quick chromatic aberration here. And let's create a camera because let's face it, we need a camera. All right, let's create a camera here. So one node camera is fine because we're gonna dictate the point of interest in another way. And now we're gonna create another layer called a null object. And we're gonna call this cam control or for camera control, obviously. We're gonna make it 3D. And now we're gonna pick whip the camera to the camera control. So now we can see, whoops, now we can see, we can move the camera in 3D space and it's all looking quite gorgeous. All right, so let's go down here to the quick chromatic aberration to effect and let's all click on the position. Let's start by writing val z as in value for the C axis. And let's pick whip all the way up to the camera control Z axis, then minus this own layer's Z position, so the depth position, you're subtracting them from each other, and then plus the point of interest of our control layer, so we can basically manually adjust how far or how close the camera focuses. So next we'll write distance equals math dot apps absolute and then val z. All right. So what this is doing is I'm converting this number to a purely positive number. As soon as you write something within the, the parentheses of a math apps uh, function, even if this number is negative, it's gonna turn it into a positive. So it's, this is always gonna end up being a positive number, okay? Now, now let's go a little bit further down. Let's expand this so we can see what we are doing. So let's start by writing linear down here. I'll explain in a second. So the first parameter is gonna be distance. As you can see here, now the next variable is going to be zero. I'm sorry, parameter. The next parameter is going to be zero. Now, this value is going to be doff distance right here, then comma again, zero, and then comma again, and then it's going to be doff amount. There we go. This linear expression is going to take this first value, the distance, which is constantly being calculated based on how close the camera is to the layer. And now we're going to dictate the distance from zero, being the absolute minimum, to the maximum distance from the camera is going to dictate how much it's going to be distorted. So from zero, if we're completely close to the layer, we don't want it to have any RGB split whatsoever. But we also dictate the maximum it's allowed to split. So this is going to become a little bit more obvious in a second. Okay, so initially nothing's really happening, right? Not even if we're moving the camera. And that's because the amount and the distance are set to zero. So let's say distance 15,000, right? And let's say the DOF amount, I don't know, 50. See, now it starts to split. And if we move the camera in C depth, you'll see it actually decreases increases the closer we get to miles. See? All right, so that's the initial setup here. So, so now we can basically paste this ex same expression down in a mounted tint. So we just paste this. So we just have to switch out a few things, like down here, we'll switch out doff distance with tint distance. All right, tint distance, and the last slider, this, this last text, we just eliminate or change to 100. So that is the maximum amount it can tint. You can always make the, this into a variable as well and attach it to your control layer. So let's reapply the effects here. So hue, CC composite, and now tint. So see, tint is not making much of a difference. So if we go up to control layer, and add 15,000 in tint, now he starts to be tinted. So yeah, as you can see, 
The closer we get, the less he's tinted and the more sharp he becomes. Same if you go all the way back, it's going to tint all the way. So if you want to also be able to control the tint, you can always duplicate one of the sliders and then tint amount. And then we can say, let's say 60 as a maximum. So let's go down here in the expression and switch out 100 by pick whipping up to tint amount. Bam. All right. Let's reset this, the position of the camera to zero. And see, the cool thing is, let's minimize all these things here. So under miles, we can basically just command A or control A, copy, and just paste the effects directly onto the other two layers. And this will now be dynamic. So if we move the camera, let me just hide the GUI here. If we move the camera further away, they're going to become more distorted or have more chromatic aberration and more tint. And the closer we get, the sharper they become. And maybe, as you can see Spider-Man here, because he's closer to us, he is starting to become somewhat blurry again, or the chromatic aberration is starting to affect him. So that is the point of the point of interest. So let's decrease this to 100. Maybe even less, I can see. So we can just decrease it until Spider-Man is sharp, right? You can actually basically choose where the point of interest is in your scene. As you can see, the further away it goes, the more, the closer things to us start to tint, and vice versa. So I hope this was useful for you, and I hope that you can use this for all the other setups. Maybe you can come up with your own ideas of how to modify this technique or use it for some other things. I hope to see some of the great effects and ideas that you guys come up with with this stuff. So um, have a badass day. All right, see you guys.